The Nigerian banking sector is up 44% this year, and in the last quarter, it's up over 7%. Where can it go from here? And uh, to review the Q3 numbers that, of course, has been the catalyst for this move, it's Adeolu Amotola. He's a banking analyst at ARM Investment Managers. Adeolu, it's great to have you on the show today. And maybe we should, first of all, get your view on the key takeaways from the Q3 numbers. I think, generally, Q2 was very exciting. Q1 was also exciting. But what we're hearing, generally, is that Q3 was less exciting, but some people just thought it was expected anyway. Yeah, it was interesting, the sort of numbers that we had. Uh, we thought that uh, if you looked at our last report where we talked about yield trends, uh, we felt that we're clearly going to see a slowdown uh, in H2, starting right from the top line in terms of revenue generation. Uh, interestingly, however, it's been a bit mixed in terms of what we expected. Uh, we have the bigger banks even also affected by the top line slowdown, uh, whereas a lot of the smaller banks were able to make headway, uh, the likes of Diamond and Fidelity spring to mind. Uh, we're also very um, concerned about what's going to happen with funding costs, uh, given what the CBI and I've been doing in terms of monetary tightening uh, throughout as well the specific measures uh, in July, right. uh, the CRR. Uh, again, that also came out to be uh, slightly different uh, from what we expected. Uh, we had um, a lot, a number of the mid-tier banks uh, gain deposits much faster. Uh, we had a number of the big banks uh, on the converse uh, lose some of their deposits. Uh, you saw funding costs again tick up uh, for a number of those big names. Mm -hmm. uh, so on that front, it was, a, it, it, it was pretty interesting. Uh, what was perhaps common to everybody across board uh, was much weaker profitability compared right. to what we had uh, in q your, your thoughts on the trend with respect to cost though I know that was be, has been a big issue for the banks yeah. a lot of people pointing to that because um, loan growth has been pretty slow this year yeah. and the recovery has in that on that front has not been um, as widely anticipated yeah. so on the cost side how well do you think the banks are doing in terms of funding costs, well, or no, in terms of operating costs, cost, uh, operating costs. Uh, what a lot of the banks have been doing are really been to sort of uh, maintain efficiency initiatives. Uh, for a number of them, you've seen that, uh, in spite of what we've seen so far this year, there hasn't been a dramatic worsening. Uh, for the big banks, which have had um, funding costs, uh, which had operational costs deteriorate, uh, we had uh, some specific um, events to tie it to. As in, for instance, talking about staff rationalization, um, FBN as well, Intern at the same. Thing. Access talking about the charge they had to take on the sale of Hamcom bonds. Uh, so those were a bit of exceptional cases. Right. Uh, but by and large, for the big banks, uh, what we've seen is that they sort of been able to bring the efficiency uh, initiatives to bear. Uh, we've seen cost income ratios come down. Uh, which, that space. which which results stood out for you? I mean, some people point to Q, um, Diamond Bank's numbers. We've seen huge rally in the stock this year. Others will point to First Bank, especially in the top tier in the, in the top tier space. Yeah. Um, Diamond Bank, I think, uh, was particularly good, uh, um, perhaps not much more so than we expected. I love that recovery is still fitting off um, from what was seen uh, last year. Um, notwithstanding, we're a bit concerned about the level of provisions, uh, yeah. currently at about $24 billion, uh, which is still significant if you look at where they were uh, last year. Uh, but as far as our first bank is concerned, uh, we have to say that we were not as tickled by the performance as what we would have um, envisaged. Uh, it was good, no doubt, uh, but we find that the likes of um, Zenith and GTB, in spite of perhaps um as much or worse pressures on top line, we're able to sort of maintain margins and profitability um, at similar levels. Uh, First Bank, however, you know, showing some pressure on that front. So it wasn't a bad performance. Uh, what perhaps gives us a bit of concern is that as far as revenue growth is concerned going forward, uh, they will be uh, looking to non-interest income uh, to drive that, uh, which was actually what slowed down in Q3. Going into Q4, what can you take away from these Q3 numbers? Uh, we probably won't see results till about March next year because the next sets will be audited, yeah. but what are your broad expectations going forward as the banks close the year? More of the same. More of the same for virtually every uh, bank in the industry. Uh, we think that uh, those uh, it, it was probably the first effects of that tightening. Uh, if there's no change in, in the November MPC, which we don't expect there would be, right. if at all, it would probably be symbolic. Uh, we think it's going to be the same pattern, um, rising funding costs, uh, managed to keep operating costs flat, uh, but some signs of asset quality issues still in the industry. Uh, if you put all that together on slowing top line, uh, then you're likely to see that you're going to have slightly weaker profitability. All right, so, as well. all that said, where do we play? Tier one, tier two, 
Which names look interesting to you? Now? As it looks right now, uh, we're, we're trying to seek out opportunities in the tier two space. A lot of the 44 percent year to day performance that you refer to has been driven uh, by the big banks. Uh, in terms of valuation as well, they are a bit ahead. Um, broadly, for the sector, we're very positive because um, uh, PE multiples, for instance, are still within single digit levels. So it's broadly attractive. Uh, but you know, you have to cherry pick a bit. And mm -hmm. in that sense, we're really looking for specific names uh, within the tier two space uh, that perhaps have move thus far. Uh, in spite of Diamond's uh, 100 and plus performance uh, percent. It's coming from a pretty low base. You think yeah. it could extend we, that? We think it has a lot more room to run, especially as they're very clear on the strategy. Uh, we have a lot more names uh, buying into uh, the Diamond strategy. I think that would serve them well in terms of share price performance mm -hmm. uh, over the next um, few quarters. Right. Uh, we're looking to likes of Fidelity as well. Uh, mm -hmm. we, th we think would be could be very interesting. FCM is another name that we're interested in. Uh, we'd just like to see how well they're able to complete uh, their operational integration uh, issues with Finbank. All right, Diolo, thank you so much for joining us. We'll have to leave you there. Diolo Motola from ARM Investment Managers give us a perspective on the Nigerian banking sector in Q3 and what to expect in Q4. When we come back, we'll take our focus back to the broader market and see how the NSC is beginning to rally after falling back quite a bit last week. So stay with us. We'll be back in two minutes.